Hi everyone and welcome to our very first video tutorial. My name is Max, um, full stack developer at Snipcart. Really happy to be trying this new format with you guys. Uh, so today we're going to talk about SEO for your FPA, uh, specifically pre-render and uh, server-side rendering. We, we wrote a little blog post about this a while ago. Uh, you have the link in the description. If you, can, if you also want to have access to the demo we use, the code for the demo we use, uh, there's a link for the GitHub repo. So let, let's jump right in. So single page apps, they're playing an increasingly important role in modern web development. They're kind of the go-to architectures for uh, web app and also for some static website if you want to use that. They're fast, they're really fun to build, they're also way more flexible than a traditional MTC type of things. Although they do come with some, uh, with some drawbacks, Specifically SEO-wise, uh, Google bots are getting better and better at crawling them, but at the moment they only crawl the synchronous content. They won't crawl your asynchronous content. So let's say you are fetching a, uh, a route uh, to get your information and then render it in your SPA. Well, the bots, the crawlers, are not going to be able to index th that content. And that's why you want to use some tools so that your uh, search engine's rankings uh, are, don't suffer from, from that. So let's see our little demo store here. Let's say we want to sell some glasses online. That's our store. We have some, some, some glasses. And let's check out the page source of this page. And let's zoom in a bit. Here we have the div uh, with an app ID. And we have our build.js, and that's our Vue.js app right here. So in this JS, we fetch a, we fetch some dynamic content from the server, and then we uh, render this content in some views, and then we inject it directly in this div. That's the the idea behind uh, SPA. If we go back to the store now and we inspect it, so that we have the current state of the of them, we can see now that the same div with the app ID has some content in it. And that's what our app did, right? So it injected the content directly here. So when a crawler comes, what he sees is not this, but really the source code that we saw earlier. Our goal with pre-rendering or server-side rendering is to have this state, right? The final state, but directly on the page load. The solutions for that is really server-side rendering or uh, pre-rendering. So Let's jump right in. So, server-side rendering. Um, in a server-side rendering setup, you want to have uh, the, render, the rendering logic directly done into the, into the back end. So let's say you have a request from uh, the client that gets into your server. What you want to do is execute the request like inside the SPA in an OGS environment, but directly in the back end. So that what you return to the, to the client is a fully rendered uh, HTML view. So the client can just take it and then dump it directly and it's done without any logic done. You wanna do this if uh, you have a really time sensitive app and you want to offload as much as logic as you want, uh, as much as logic as possible on the server. Uh, the downsides of that is that uh, it's gonna be a little bit more uh, development time since it's a little bit harder to set up server-side rendering than it would to do, let's say, pre-render. Uh, you're going to put more stress on your server. So if your server is well built and can handle uh, more processing, then it's going to be okay. But if it's not powerful enough to answer those requests, the whole system is going to be laggy, and you, and you don't want that. If your only concern is SEO, I don't think you should do server-side rendering. You should go for a pre-render approach. And that's what we're uh, aiming at for our demo. That's only SEO purpose. For, so let's check how it works. There's a couple of ways you can do pre-rendering. Uh, you can do per request basis uh, pre-rendering, like a service like pre-render.io. Or you can take more a static approach like the pre-render SPA plugin. We're gonna start looking at how pre-render.io works. Uh, so here's a little graphic showing how it works. So the client sends requests, uh, server checks if it's a user or not uh, with the escape fragment. 
if it's a user, he's going to answer with uh, an SPA, and the SPA is going to fetch then data with a sync, a sync calls. If it's not a user, it means it's a crawler. So if it's a crawler, he's going to send the request to prerender.io. Prerender.io is going to check if he has the request cached or not. If he has it, then he can just simply answer his back to the server, and the server is going to proxy that to the client. If he doesn't have the request cache, he's going to do a little bit like, actually, like the server side approach, and he's going to execute the request in a Node.js environment and uh, return a fully rendered view so that the server can uh, return this to the client. So, in one way, the client gets uh, an SPA. And the other way, if it's a crawler, he gets just a fully rendered HTML page that he can just read, so you don't, uh, so you have good SEO. Let's check out a little bit more the pre-render SPA plugin. Here we're back in our demo star we showed earlier. So just a quick reminder of what our goal was. So it was to have the same state as the current DOM, but directly on the page load, if you remember. So let's go into code and check out how it's done with the pre-render SPA plugin. So here we have our webpack config, okay? So we have commented the pre-render SPA plugin for the demo earlier. So let's uncomment that. And if you remember earlier, I said uh, that the SPA plugin was more uh, static than, uh, let's say, uh, server-side rendering. What I meant by that is that it's happening on the build time and not during the runtime. So your app is going to run as normal when it's deployed, but during the build time, that's when the, the plugin is going to be used. So we can see here um, the first input of our, uh, the, the first input of the plugin is the output directory that we want to output the static file that's going to be generated. And then the second input is the array of all the routes we want to, we want to pre-render. So after that, during the build time, Webpack is going to use this plugin, and the plugin is going to uh, check the routes, and then it's going, to, it's going to load them with PhantomJS, and then create static files based on that, so that when the page loads, the, the, the final state is already in the DOM, so that the crawlers can, can crawl it. If we just uh, save this file, and then we're going to build again, our app. Our app is built. We can uh, now see a new dist folder. So if we go in it uh, and do a simple HTTP server with that, we're running at 8080. If we go back to our demo store, we're already on this web page. If we do a hard refresh now, here we just refreshed our page. Uh, let's check directly the source code. So here we have it. You can see the same div with the app ID, but there's content in it now. So, which means the content is synchronous so that, so when crawlers come, they see this content directly and they can index it without you losing any points over SEO or something like that. So that's, that's, that was our final goal. We're going to close that and you can see, um, the SBA is still working. You can click here and you have partial rendering without any hard refresh or stuff like that. It's really the same app, but you have uh, static files with the content in it at first. So let's have a quick look at the documentation now uh, of the plugin. So if we go here on the NPM page, actually the creator is one of the core dev of Vue.js, so that's pretty neat. If we go here to usage, we can see webpack sample. That's the config we used for our demo. Uh, but if we, you scroll down a little bit more, you'll see Webpack Advanced, and that's where really uh, real life kind of scenarios uh, can be handled, which means if you have more complex scenarios uh, that needs really more option and configuration, that's where it's gonna happen. Uh, we're gonna put the link in the description if you, wanna, if you wanna check this out. So as a quick recap, guys, if you're looking at server-side rendering strictly for SEO reasons, I would go rather with the pre-rendering approach Although if you're also considering offloading some of the rendering logic to your server, I would go with the server side approach. Now, uh, it's really a trade-off between development time, build process, and stuff like that. But I think now you're in a better position for making such a call.
Thanks a lot for watching, guys. If you enjoyed, you can uh, like the video, share it. I also invite you to subscribe to the channel. We're going to do more videos, surely. Um, also, if you have any suggestions concerning the format or the content, you can leave a comment directly in the section below. I also invite you on Cinepcar's blog for more technical uh, content. You can also follow us on uh, Snapchat. No, we don't have Snapchat, but you can follow us on Twitter and Facebook. So see you guys.